Hi everyone, I'm Kava, and today we're going to talk about the steps to get started on your paper. Starting on academic writing can be really challenging. Most of the time you have your own ideas and know what you want to write about, but you might not know where to start and how to turn those ideas into a coherent and meaningful piece of research. This video is the first in a series about exactly the same thing, how to get started on writing your papers. All right, the very first step is finding a topic, and not just finding it, but working on the topic so that it can be shaped into a research question. But where do topics come from? Well, the answer is easy, either from your interests or from the suggestions you get from your course instructors. If you are to choose your own topic, though, go for what you like or know more about. Also, consider sources available to you. The last thing you want is to choose a topic you do not have or cannot find enough information about. Once you have a topic of your interest or something that you feel pretty confident you have or can find resources on, then you need to work on it a little bit more to shape it into a research paper. Pay attention to the scope of your topic. Is it too general? Well, most of the time they are, especially if those that are taken from our interests. For example, you like video games. Fair enough, you can write about it. But this is too broad. What about video games would you like to focus on? One suggestion is to add more words to your topic to make it more dynamic. Think of elements of action, like verbs, and also elements of relationship between your topic and related issues. For the video games example, you can explore the relationship between video games and school performance, or maybe the relationship between video games and brain function. The element of action that we can easily insert here is the verb influence, like the influence of playing video games on brain functionality. You can keep narrowing this down by making it more specific. Think of each item in your topic and see if you'd like to narrow it down to a more specific example of its own type. Maybe you'd like to see the influence of playing violent video games on brain regions responsible for attention, or maybe you're more interested in seeing the positive influence of playing strategy video games on school performance. The combinations are endless. You can work with your topic to take it to any direction you want with any level of specificity you want. Just keep in mind, you need to come up with a topic that leads to original and significant questions and can be realistically answered in your paper. But how can you know your topic explores original and significant questions? Well, generally speaking, any topic you choose combines some data, or raw material if you wish, with a method of analyzing that data. In order to develop a research-worthy topic, you do not have to come up with a completely new topic. This is almost impossible. But you can take either of these three approaches to combine your data with methods in new ways. In the first approach, you have access to or collected new information, either through running experiments or accessing new material, and now you can analyze them using methods developed by others. For example, you have new information about a group of elementary school students whose grades have gone up over the course of a year by playing strategy video games, like this is really possible. And now you can use a well-known method of analysis in the field of educational psychology to make sense of this new information. Alternatively, you can use old data collected by other researchers or information everybody else has access to, but combine it with a new method of analysis that you thought of. For example, 20th century critics who started to study Hamlet using psychoanalysis were producing new knowledge by applying a new theory to a 300-year-old text. Finally, you can combine old evidence and old data, but in a new way. For instance, if you write a paper on the negative effects of residential schools on indigenous children, you have not produced anything new, others have explored this. Similarly, if you review the indigenous students' paintings during that time, you're not pointing toward a new find. Others have discovered these paintings before you. But maybe if you try to read into the traumatic effects of residential schools on those children through their art, then you might be onto something new. Okay guys, this was a short intro about developing a specific, original, and significant topic. Stay tuned for our next videos where we'll talk about the next steps in forming your research question and thesis statement. Thank you for watching and bye. To learn more tips and tricks to help improve your academic communication skills, visit the University of Victoria Center for Academic Communication website for workshops and other resources. You can also book an appointment with one of our tutors by clicking the link in the description below. Good luck and see you soon.